Good morning, boys and girls, sports fans. Dan, JDOD, I've got Mr. Mark Yolton, Mr. SCN. That's me. And I have given this guy such a load of trouble. Yes, trouble is a nice word, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that. So you can kick back now. You can now it's running. You can tell me why it's running and what's happening and what do you need to do? Come on. Yeah. Okay. So Your chance. Let Matt. me give you a little bit of the history. Is that okay? No, we know the history. The history was it didn't work. The history was it didn't work. It was a Frankenstein monster, right? <laughs> right it was right, a Frankenstein right. monster, which you know, when Doctor Frankenstein de decided to build this thing, he wanted to build a a person out of parts. Um, he didn't imagine a monster, but and our thing turned into a monster because it became unmanageable. We couldn't upgrade the thing. We couldn't, uh, the old SCN is mm. what I'm referring to for those who aren't in the know. Um, it was built over nine years of technology. And then back nine years ago, Facebook didn't even exist. LinkedIn yeah. didn't exist. Yeah. Twitter didn't exist. So we were trying to build off this old platform. And it just became uh, unmanageable. It would go down. It was slow. Um, there were so many interdependent parts that were all built separately and cobbled together that we could never upgrade fast enough or move, move quickly enough in order to satisfy the current requirements of social media and social networking. And it was built for geeks who don't care about all that stuff. They just, they, yeah. they'll, they'll write in HTML if they have to, to do a blog post, won't yeah. they? Yeah. Not everybody they else. They will. Right. Not everybody else. We were very limited in going beyond the geek audience, Yeah. right? Going beyond developers to interest uh, business people, mm. core business people who are used to now mm. LinkedIn and Facebook and all these really simple tools mm. where it's WYSIWYG and you type it in and you get something out, it looks beautiful, um, you get notifications, you can follow people, user profiles are rich with photos and all sorts of other information. Mm. We didn't have any of that. And mm. to build it would have cost us a fortune and it's, frankly it's not our core technology, it's not our core expertise. So we don't want to be spending our SAP budget on building such a platform. So the decision was taken, actually we hoped to do this years and years ago, uh, but could never find the money. We found the money last year, mm. um, and it was a sizable investment in order to upgrade our entire platform. And what we said was, let's look for a vendor, a partner, um, a platform that has this all integrated for us, and it's their core business. It's mm. not context for them. Mm. Um, so that's what we did. So we spent all of last year working on designing, building, architecting, testing, uh, this new SCN platform. Mm. Um, we hoped to launch it at the end of last year, but we realized we weren't ready. Um, and it was a self-imposed deadline. It was really a deadline, an internal deadline based on our team KPIs and our company goals. There was no revenue at stake. There were no customers that would you know, suffer if we didn't go live sooner. So I put it off. Um, about mid-December, I put it off. And I gave and then, you a really hard time yes, over you that. Did. <laughs> yes, you did. Um, and what's, fortunately, it, what's it deserved, Mark? Tell me it was... Uh, I don't think so. Okay, fine. I don't think so. All right. Because if you had seen, well, there were two things. Number one, one of the criticisms was, shouldn't they have known this ahead of time? Sure. And so as a business person, as a manager, I'm pushing the team, I'm pushing the IT organization, I'm pushing everybody to say, we got to deliver, we got to deliver, we got to deliver. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't willing to give up, right? Oh, right I wasn't right, right. willing to give okay. up until the fourth quarter, okay. right? Yeah. Uh, think football or, or yeah, something yeah, yeah, else, yeah. right? I wasn't ready to give up in the second quarter and say, you know what? It looks like we're losing this game. Let's give up and go home now. I was going to push through all the way. The team is extraordinary, so I relied on them. Uh, and I pushed them really hard. And they, they really worked as hard as they could to make this thing happen. Mm. But in the end, I looked at it, it was actually the Friday before we were gonna go live. We are gonna go live that next Monday. On, on that Friday, I pulled the plug and said, we're not ready. Now, I, I mean, in retrospect, I have to say, you guys were pretty brave. It's like, Friday afternoon, everybody's getting ready for this on Monday, and yeah. sorry guys, not happening. Yes. What? <laughs> yeah, you can imagine I had an interesting weekend. So I had you to, did, you yeah, did. Because you Friday, did. I had to communicate to all the internal stakeholders and say, we're not going live as we said we were yeah. going live. Yeah pull back everything that you'd intended to do. We had gotten the community worked up into this fever pitch, right, where they were ready that this was gonna happen. Mm. You know, we, the change management around this is, was just as big an effort as the IT mm. infrastructure part was, getting people's hearts and minds, and we actually had a program that we call, a work stream, that we called Winning Hearts and Minds, which mm. was get everybody's ready for change, because change is hard no matter if it's good change or bad change. So um, that weekend, I had to communicate with the internal stakeholders. I had to communicate with the external stakeholders, in particular the community folks, and say, OK, we're not going live like we said we were going to do. Mm. Friday, I published a blog. Um, that's one that you initially picked up on. 
Saturday, I was out walking my dog with my wife and, and watching my Blackberry or my iPhone or whatever and going, oh my God, I gotta get back to the house because I gotta <laughs> respond to some of this stuff, right? Uh, the, the storm has come, right? Yeah. And I needed to get back and be able to respond. So that Saturday night, I spent some time, a long, a long bit of time, writing a second blog. Did you get any sleep? Yeah, I finally got some sleep. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, I got some sleep. But the second blog got a lot better response because I kind of laid it all out on the table and said, yeah. here were the issues, here's what happened, here's what we went through, here's how we tried. Um, I know you're disappointed, we're disappointed too, but I would rather go live with um, a quality product than to launch something prematurely. Okay. And I, the, to be honest with you, even though you gave me a bunch of grief and a couple other people did, it was fairly limited, the grief. Most of the responses were, we like that. We like that sentiment that you would that you're putting quality above the time frame, especially if it's not, uh, you know, a revenue mm. problem mm. or some customer mm. is relying mm. on this in order to be successful. Mm. So, I got good response actually. Okay. So now we got it out. You got it out a few weeks ago, right? Yeah, March sixteenth. Uh, yeah. Believe okay. It was today. And I, I mean, I, I found a lot of sort of fairly irritating things. Mm -hmm. uh, things that are relatively simple. Um, that can be fixed, I reckon. And, yeah. and from what I understand, you guys are working fairly hard on, on dealing with that. And there were some performance issues, but yes. again, that was to be expected to some extent. What, what actually happened there? I mean, one of the things that was said to me was that um, the kind of things that arose during the testing period mm -hmm. suddenly didn't arise. Different bunch of stuff happened once yeah, you very went different, live. What very happened? Different, very different user behavior than we expected. Oh, really? Yeah, very different. Mm. And we had a beta test that ran for three months almost, mm. um, and the beta test had a thousand people in it. Right. So it was some of our most active users and some internal people and some of the top contributors mm. and the mentors and so forth. We had a thousand people, so we thought, that's a pretty good Yes. sample yeah, of yeah. the audience yeah. to get good feedback on use uh, on use patterns and um, the use patterns were quite different the use patterns were um, a lot of uh, searching in a different way sort of the navigation was different than mm -hmm. what we had expected even what we saw in usability testing we did some use we did two or three maybe four rounds of usability testing we did two in person at TechEd in Las Vegas mm -hmm. and TechEd in Madrid, where we'd sit people down and say, okay, here's the new design, uh, here's a draft navigation. It was still early then, because it was October, November timeframe. Walk through it, mm -hmm. try to complete some tasks and we'll see how that goes and then we'll make some tweaks and modifications. We did that in Vegas and then we made some tweaks. We went to Vi Madrid, tried mm -hmm. it again, saw some other behavior. We did some usability testing in a lab in Palo Alto, uh, very formal stuff where you're, we're sitting behind a, you know, a mirror yeah, yeah. in a glass room and the us user is uh, sitting and trying to navigate a task uh, with a person sitting next to them who's kind of guiding them through the behavior. I'm not and, convinced that kind of thing works Well, well. I think it does sometimes. Right, you, right. Get, you get some good feedback. Yeah. Um, and we, we did it with both very uh, people very familiar with the old community mm. and people who didn't know anything about it. Right. So, we tried a bunch of things, and then uh, December, that happened, we made some more modifications, and we did it again in, I'm gonna say, February timeframe. And the user behaviors, once we flipped the switch on, were very different. Mm. It was very odd. Um, so we think we figured it out. We also found some bugs in the system, in the underlying code. Highly surprising. Um, we turned off a bunch of things, so one of the things that we turned off was the ability for Google even to crawl. Mm. So for the first two weeks, search was very difficult, because a lot of, half as many people use Google to search as use the internal search right, engine. And right. that has been the pattern for years. Um, so we turned off Google and that meant half of the people couldn't find stuff, right? Especially because we had reorganized all the content. Why did you do that? Why did you turn Google off? What was the point? Because our, our worry was that the load on the servers and the database mm. of Google simply crawling with the bots mm. put, put so much load on a system that wasn't performing well okay. anyhow. Okay. So we turned all that stuff off. Anything that was sort of extraneous, we turned off. Now, after two weeks, we I'm happy to say we turn it back on. Mm. Um, there are something like 2,500 external sites mm. that index our code or that refer to our wow. refer to our pages. And there are multiple millions, I believe the number is 220 million external links into SCN from some place or another. It's, a, it's unbelievable the number of links that yeah. are there. Yeah. So that heavy load of the bots trying to right. access and index that content mm. was something that we didn't put, want to put strain on the system. Okay, so are you happy now? Not yet. Happier. I'm happier. Yes, I'm happier. 
Um, the performance seems to be pretty good. Right. Um, it's not fantastic yet, but it's pretty good. We're not logging people out. That was a function of the performance. So as the performance, as the as the servers got clogged, the database calls would just run and run and run and mm -hmm. never stop. Um, people would get kicked out of the system. That that was a huge annoyance in the first three days. Mm -hmm. That's fixed. Um, we're starting to turn on things like Google indexing the site. Um, we're starting to turn on some other capabilities as well. Mm. Um, we're getting great feedback from the community. I, we've been very open and we've essentially crowdsourced the bug reporting that's, that's, to the community. That's been, that's been, that's been pretty good. I, the only problem that I had with that initially, and I don't know if this has been solved or not, was I wasn't clear whether I was reporting something that other people have been reporting on it was quite difficult to figure, yes. to figure that out initially. Well, you can search that, that bug database, well. but even searching that bug database yeah. isn't a great experience. Mm. But nevertheless, even if you're not sure, mm. report it again. Right. We'll sort it out later. Um, we already have a, a punch list of you know 200 different things that we want to fix or improve. Some of it is platform related, and some of it is usability related. Okay, how long do you think it will be before you can say, you know what, I'm. You're never done with these things. You're never but, done. No, but how long do you think it'll be before you can say, you know what, I think we're in really good shape now? I think it'll be May, June. So oh, May good. is Sapphire. Yeah. yeah. Uh, June yeah. is mid-year. Yeah, it's going to get hammered over Sapphire, yes, isn't it? Yeah. it is. Uh, it'll get hammered over Sapphire. Yeah. The It's actually getting hammered now. Right. I, we're, I'm really surprised. Uh, John Appleby, one of our fellow friends and mentors, um, he published a blog, and within 24 hours, he had thousands of hits. Mm. Mm. Thousands of views on his blog, and he said, mm. I never get this many. Mm. I never used to get this many. He's a pretty popular blogger. Yeah, yeah. So he's getting all these hits, and I think the activity, the, one of the things that we were looking to do was raise the visibility of some of this stuff. Sure. Um, and it's much more visible now. So I can follow a topic, yep. like if I care about ABAP, or I care about HANA, or I care about cloud. I can follow that topic, but I can also follow interesting people like John Appleby or you or John Reed or whoever it happens to be. I can follow individual people so that anytime those people publish something, I get a notification, okay. either email or uh, in my activity stream. Okay. I think that's creating a great deal more traffic as well. So you're forgiven. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Father. <laughs> Granddad, more like yes. it. Yes. Boys and girls, you heard it first here, Mr. Yolton. The one and only. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ryan. Dennis. Cheers. Appreciate it. <laughs>